Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Bama Standard. Before you do anything, I want you to click on that like and subscribe button, jump in the chat and in the comment section. Also, need y'all to follow us on all of our social media platforms, including our new YouTube channel. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the Bama Standard. And again, we got a new YouTube channel. Check us out. We are brought to you, as always, by Workspace Solutions and Oakmont Financial Partners, LLC. And I'm your host, Justin Riley. And with me, as always, is an Alabama legend, all-SEC linebacker, Mr. Marvin Constant, comedy legend Steve Brown, and the analyst, the senior analyst of Touchdown, Alabama Magazine, who just kicked it, got kicked out of his house so his wife could get her hair did, Stephen M. Smith. Man, you can put out already? <laughs> no, nah, see, no, nah, see, my sister put your drawers at man. Put nah, your drawers on. No, nah, my yeah. sister came over to do her hair, and they got hair everywhere. Hey, <laughs> did you say put? Did you tell him to put his man drawers on? They, yeah. they, he do have them on, but they're wrapped around his ankles right now. So yeah, he can't. They wow, should. really? <laughs> wow. Hey, uh, I, I got a correction I, 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 I need to make. I, 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 I got, got, got Steve. I got a hundred. Say he wearing tidy whiteys too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I'll take that hundred. I'll take that hundred off. Hey, hey, that was directed towards you, sir. We're talking about you. Hey, listen. So well, you um, are wrong, but I'll take that hundred. <laughs> Justin, you made you I, I you made a little mistake when it comes to you saying follow. Uh I I just want to tell y'all that they Facebook Marshawn lynched me again. I'm in Facebook jail. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do now, man? Uh, no. I, I, uh, I, 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 I was, I was, I was showing this lady my new He's about Stacey to lie, Marvin. He's hear, hear him stuttering. No, I was showing my new Stacey Adams, but I didn't have on any pants. But I took the picture up too high. So. <laughs> yeah. Why won't they let you be great? I don't know, man, but yeah, I'm, I'm in Facebook jail, so I got like 23 more days. I don't know how. I'm, I'm sure Marshawn. I'm sure Marshawn Lynch will be out before me because he got money. But well, I'm yeah, put it down for all the cognac drinkers on Marshawn to have. <laughs> so, so Stephen, Stephen M. Listen, forget about me. What happened in Bama practice? What's going on? I want to hear about my guy. Yeah, let's go about fall practice. We got a couple of things we want to talk about. Let's lead off on the overall attitude, man. Will Anderson said there are no knuckleheads. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, that's what he said. There's no negativity in the room. If you walk inside of practice, inside the facility, there's the participation trophy, the runner-up trophy, and folks hate that thing. Like, Emil Ekior hate it. Will Anderson hate it. they like, we don't want this. We want the national championship. So everybody's putting, everybody's putting in the same direction. And uh, Will, Will also, now Will also did this. In the team photo that they took on Sunday, everybody else was smiling. Will Anderson looked like he wanted to take a blowtorch and kill the whole team. No, Will Anderson looked like Marshawn Lynch. Look, uh, look, uh, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, Marshawn, you too old to be out there with them. Will did not smile. Will, At all. I, you know what? I'm sorry. Y'all can take this how you want it. I, I'm controversial. Will had the look on his face like he just got off that boat over 400 years ago. <laughs> he, got, he just got captured from slavery and he didn't want to be here. I'm telling you, Will is going to do, Will is going to do some phenomenal things this fall. I already see you know, it. But, but you know why he's going to do phenomenal things this fall, Steve? Why? Dallas Turner. Yep. 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 Dallas Turner. Yep. Watch no, what I tell you. Don't be surprised if Dallas Turner leads the team in sacks. Don't be, you know what? Let me say something. Justin, Marvin, I think Marvin just finally said something that made sense on this show. We've been here how long? And he finally said something that made sense. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Look at God, Steve. He's still in the miracle God, business, God. isn't he? God is good. <laughs> I, 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 I wish he'll perform another miracle and give Stephen M some smaller glasses. Can you back up out the screen, please? There you go. There you well, go. Listen, guys, uh, we definitely have a lot to talk about in regards to our, uh, to fall practice. But our first guest is here, and uh, in order to welcome him improperly, I'm going to turn the mic over to Stephen M. Smith to do what he does best. Go ahead, Steve. 
Stephen M. Smith. He froze. He in a car. He can't hear nothing. I think I think he paused the the FaceTime for his wife yelling at him. <laughs> now what he doing is he looking at himself. He looking at he looking at him looking at himself through him no, glasses. No, no, no. I'm gonna give you the scientific explanation. If you know anything about the EMS, which is the electromagnetic spectrum, and you know about waves, <laughs> you start getting into refraction and all this other. Hey man, wait, waves, look, this ain't the damn X man. His glasses are, are causing refraction right now. It's we got cyclops up there, man. The signal. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey. Is it me or does Stephen? Does Stephen M look like Marshawn Lynch with glasses on? <laughs> but, but why does his crew neck look like a V neck though? That's when you know you got a little neck when your crew neck fit like a V neck. Hey man, <laughs> things change when you get married, so we're gonna see a different uh, Stephen hey, Smith. Hey, I don't care what you say. That woman is beating on him. That That's what it is. Oh, and Justin, you, Justin, you <laughs> need to go investigate because I'm not going over there. He's gonna jump back on on this live and start co uh, quoting the color purple. Watch. Hey, <laughs> hey Steve, you watch me get back on here, Steve. His crew neck looked like a V neck. Either she been snatching him or he got a lad neck. One or two. <laughs> hey man. All right, so I tell you what. Uh, uh, um, you want to wait till you get back on, and Justin? Do you want to? Do you want to uh, introduce him? <laughs> well, I was hoping that we have our our man to do it. But listen, he's he, we have a superstar here, so we can't keep him waiting in the wings. But I'll go ahead and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, wel welcoming into the show one of the top athletes coming in on this 2023 recruiting class. A man who's got speed and can break ankles. Man, love that that highlight film. He is straight out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Mr. Brayson Hubbard, what's going on, brother? What's going on, guys? What's up, man? How you doing? Bro, tired. Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hold on, man. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Come and get the screen a little bit. Let's come in. That's a white boy. Wait a minute here. That's a white dude. <laughs> Hold on. Yep. Did you say he got this speed? This is his first experience outside of me. <laughs> Did you say he got speed and he break ankles? He sure does, man. If you, well, you if know you what? I'm going to give I'm going to give him his nickname right now for the Bamination. Y'all give it up for white chocolate. White chocolate. Y'all <laughs> give it up for white chocolate. I don't know chocolate. if we can get that on back of a jersey, but we sure can petition Nick Saban there. Yeah, but but yeah. I, I still got my helmet and my shoulder pads. I can go test him out, see if he's really up to the task. <laughs> yeah. My equipment's still working. But, uh, Bray, you're on with me. I'm Justin Riley. This is comedy legend Steve Brown here at the top. And next to you is a former All-SEC linebacker, Marvin Constant. Stephen M. Smith got booted off. He is actually uh, uh, in quarantine because his wife booted him out because she had to get her yeah, hair. Yeah, I'm washing dishes. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, man, glad to have you in. Let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. So I got to ask you about those visits to the Alabama camps. Uh, of course, when you were there, you balled out, and it was no question uh, among the Alabama coaching staff that you had to be there. But what really sold you on Alabama? Yeah, just the way when I go there is, I mean, you know, in high school, you really don't get developed the way you should. Uh, so. So, I mean, when I when I get to Alabama, I mean, I know I'm going to get developed. And plus, I'll be practicing with the best and playing against the best and getting coordination. So, that, that's kind of the biggest thing that, that sold me on Alabama. So, so, so being up. at Alabama now, being that you've signed or committed with Alabama, do you feel like that's a lot of pressure? Uh, honestly, it's a bunch of weight off my shoulders just from all the recruiting stuff and recruiting to me it was right. it was really difficult you know what man i can relate to that because i i had the bride itt tech phoenix online and um job corps and they was on my ass so, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> job core not job core Hey, man, listen, y'all don't judge me. Y'all trying to embarrass me in front of this man. Don't do that. Don't do that. But, Brace, speaking of having that weight off your shoulders, now that you can breathe a little easier, uh, what are your goals for your senior year, man? How does uh, this season play out for you before you go to Alabama? Oh, yeah. I mean, I want to be the best in Mississippi. I want to show. A lot of people don't know, but I, I don't go to camps. I kind of just play 
2007. I've never been to a rivals camp. I went to my my first. I went to, to my first camp actually this summer. Um, right before I went to Alabama June 4th. So that was my my first camp ever. Then Alabama was my second camp. Big What's up? Camp guy. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, just getting ready for the season. I have all my, my goals set. Just trying to win Mr. Football again and be the best in six. Say plus being so that, those are some of my, my main goals. And the other one is going for it all, I'm trying to win it all. That's what's up. Well, Stephen M. Smith is back in the room. Uh, I guess he got pulled out of his car. Welcome back in, Stephen M. Smith. We have our first guest, Brayson Hubbard, here. And I know you got a lot to ask him. So I'll go ahead and let you be on here before you get in trouble again. I'm not in trouble here again. <laughs> I am not in any type of trouble. But, 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 but Brayson, man, in terms of just playing quarterback and playing DB, oh, upon, get, upon getting to Alabama, what, what position you feel like suits you the best just as an athlete? Um, well, I've always played. I've always played receiver. I've always played on the defense side, whether it was live. I mean, I mean, I think I, I love playing defense. It's fun. I mean, it's it's going on, especially on that side. And you get to hit people. Now you do realize. Different. You do realize playing defense in the SEC is a little bit different, right? Oh, trust me, I know. <laughs> well, well, let me say this to you. Let me say, let me say this to you. Listen, you you're gonna be playing defense in the SEC, I think. Okay, and just know this is what you need to do before you go. Look at films of Marvin Constant. And whatever he did, don't you do? Don't you do that? <laughs> you will not get in the game. You will not get your ass. You'll be sitting up, You'll be sitting up there with a right. corner. I swear to God, you will. Don't do it. Don't do it. Right. Yeah. That all SEC plaque right there says differently, though. Yeah. <laughs> but you got that back when they only had three channels on TV, Marvin. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Justin, you didn't even, Justin, you didn't even make the freshman team, so don't talk to me about football. Now. You the only senior hey, so, out there. So, so, the so, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So, so, were you always a starter? And, and always been a starter. How was she I mean, like, like, have we, were you going to do you, 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 you were all, every time you play, you were always a starter. Yeah, yeah, except for freshman year when. When I got pulled up after my ninth grade season, I spent a year. I had to sit one, one game just to learn like all the stuff, and after that, I won the starting job. Well, 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 what, what advice would you uh, give kids like me when I played? I was fourth and fifth and sixth string. What advice would you give us? You <laughs> to go to another right. room. No, nah, the advice I, I give yeah. the kids is like. You want your hair done. You don't play it. You get hurt and stuff like that. You play scared. Don't play scared. I have an older brother. So, I mean, I've always grown up playing with older kids. And so, I mean, I mean, be scared. Go for it. I'm up for a good challenge. Always be up for a challenge. So, oh, well, that, that, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. So have you been able, been able to spend time with any of the current players or you know former players uh, during your visits or whatnot? And if so, what kind of impact have they had on you? Yeah, I've I've been around a couple guys. Because, uh, me and Jordan Battle, he was the second time and did my one-on-one -on -one stuff. He was there with me kind of explaining stuff that I uh, see and all that. And I've talked to a couple guys like Will Anderson. I've talked to kool-aid a little yeah they just i mean they just said positive things about me i mean they know I was, they're like man this kid like he can actually move especially being a being a quarterback in high school and they're like man, man this, this kid is actually he can move really well well you know what i got jordan battle on here he said yeah he was nice to you but when you get them pads on it's gonna be a different story so they lied to you <laughs> hey, look i'm gonna tell you something, I'm tell you something. Listen, whatever you do, stay away from Will Anderson because he's known for biting people in the back. So I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> I don't know how the hell you get you bite somebody through a helmet. But, yeah, he does that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
no one is. We're had proud a of you, hot... man. We're proud of you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I gotta say, no one has had a hotter summer recruiting wise than Alabama right now. Matter of fact, a lot of you guys are committing are trying to recruit each other. How special can this class be? Oh yeah, it can be really special. I mean, you see, we're starting to get we're starting to get stars now. I mean, we started out. Uh, uh, I remember when I committed uh, the same day I did, and so that that kind of I think I think that boosted some of the, some of the other top recruits over to Bama too. I've seen a couple of them while I've uh, been in. Uh, yeah, we're just trying to get all those top recruits, man, and trying to flip them over. That's what's so, up. So, why, why, why didn't you? Did, did you ever? Did anybody from Mississippi uh, recruit you? Oh, Miss uh, and um, Mississippi State and people like that. They ever? Did they recruit yeah. Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Uh, uh, they recruited me. They actually offered me the uh, what's it the, the the day after. I think I got. I think I think they offered me. But no, I've never. I've never spoke. The old Miss. I had off from, uh, uh, from Southern Miss to play quarterback. Mm. You know, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna tell you this. You said you had offers from Southern Miss to play quarterback. Yes, sir. No, <coughs> you had offers from Southern Miss to get you killed. Thank God. You didn't <laughs> that you had. But those people that Southern Miss don't like you. So I'm glad you did that. Man, you know what? I can tell you a smart young man. You're gonna go far. Because I'm telling you right now, yes, yes. They also job. offer so, to play baseball there, too. And they're one of the top baseball cr- programs in America. So I, I'm sure I had a little bit of a pull on him. But he's going to be playing baseball for us, too. So, Brayson, so who, who's the next guy you think that uh, Alabama's on the verge of flipping for this class? Um, uh, uh, kid from Notre Dame. He uh he was actually there, and uh we uh, we're trying to flip him, him, but I mean it's it's hard, you know. Notre Dame and got really, really good stuff up there, so yeah, he he's kind of the one of the main ones that we've been trying. That's what's up, but hey, all you guys are doing a great job trying to recruit each other. I see it pretty much on on my entire timeline on Twitter, so. Um, y'all should really get uh, get paid coaching royalties off of that. This is hard as y'all working to bring everybody in. So, so question. Okay, I know this NIL deal is probably going to come at you. I know people going to come at you when you when you get settled on campus and all that. That's the new thing. So, I'm just going to ask you this. You know, before anybody else, do you think you'll be able to endorse Stacy Adams? See, I was just wondering. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> What? I got a hundred. I got a hundred. You don't even know who Stacy Adams is. Yeah, you know the the the, 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 the fake patent leather, the fake patent leather shoes, the old guys and drug dealers wear. You don't. No, no. <laughs> but listen, okay. uh, before we uh, before we let you go, Marvin, I would like to turn it over to you, man. What kind of advice can you give this young man going in as he prepares to not only finish his senior year but also step foot at Bryant Denny Stadium? Don't listen. Okay. Take care of your body. You know, go get the cold tub, work out, you know, do all the things you need to do to make sure you can keep your body in top peak physical condition. Secondly, when you get to Alabama, it's not an easy thing playing at Alabama by no means. Don't let anybody ever tell you any different. It's not easy to play at Alabama. You're playing with the best of the best. So never lose your confidence. Some people play their first year, some play their second year, some play their third year. When it's your time, it's your time. Just be ready when your time does come. Don't let it overwhelm you, and don't feel like it's too much for you if you don't play as soon as you think you should play. Absorb everything around you. Soak it up. Enjoy the culture. Enjoy Brian Denny. Enjoy Tuscaloosa. Enjoy the strip. Have the time of your life, because I promise you it's going to go by fast. You're going to meet teammates that are going to be your brothers for the rest of your life that you'll still talk to for the rest of your life, man. So enjoy the experience. And remember, don't ever get discouraged, man, because, again, when you're playing the best of the best, it's not that easy to get on the field. But when your number is called, be ready. Yes, sir. Uh, Marvin, you forgot. Oh, yeah. And also, it's two words you should remember besides roll time. And when you get to Tuscaloosa, I'm telling you, you need to go there immediately. You will have the time of your life. It's not roll time. 
Write write it down. You got your you got your phone on you. you got your phone on you, right? So if, if somebody's in the car, you oh, tell yeah. them to write it down. Moonwinks. Moonwinks. No, don't you dare. No. 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 What? No. Stay away from that place. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> But race, if you would, man, uh, what message do you have for Alabama fans? And also, too, before we let you go, tell all the fans how they can find you on social media. Oh, yeah. So on Twitter, I'm at Bryson Hubbard. Capital, um, Instagram, I'm B Hub underscore 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 five. And yeah, those are, those are yes, that's what the fans need to follow. They can keep up with me on there. Did you say B Hub? Don't you do it. That boy black. That boy black. I don't care what nobody says. That boy black. That boy black. That boy black. Hey, man, look, man. Follow me. Comic Steve Brown. You'll see my picture. I don't have no bottoms on. But don't just look past that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sure we just uh, we don't get a call from our HR Comic, department now. Comic Steve Brown. Comic Steve Brown. And look, I know you're going to get some NIL money, so follow me on Cash App as well. Cash App. Cash App. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Man, uh, Grayson, thank you so much for coming on, man. We had a great time sitting with you, and we are looking forward to what you're going to do, not only this your senior year, but in the coming years of Alabama. Hey, Mama, Alabama just, had a, just got another black player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to my mom, but you got it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Grayson, do me a favor. Can you? Just one time. Can you do that one time, please? Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the yeah. bait, brother. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Hold on. I'm going to screenshot him doing it. You. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, welcome to Bama, man. Hey, we're looking for big things out of you, man, and Roll Tide, man. Thank you so much for Roll coming Roll Tide, on. brother. Roll Tide. Oh, yeah, of course. Roll Justin, Roll I tide. Justin, I told you that boy was black. That boy black. That boy black. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll be in touch with you, man. Looking forward to seeing what you're gonna do. All right, Thanks. man. You're welcome. <laughs> I think we changed his life. What do you think? I mean, Brayson remind me of Dylan Lee with this phone call. I like Dylan Lee played linebacker. I don't know, man. Dylan Lee different. was a whole another level of crazy, brother. Yeah. Mom, no, that was some good advice. Marvin, that was some great advice you gave that dude, man. That's what's up. I, I, I'm about to drop some. I'm, I, I, I'm about to drop some money in, in Marvin's collection plate. That was a good word, Marvin. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's, it's the truth, man. People don't understand, man. You know, it's a lot of pressure being out there, man. When you know, it's one thing when you're a, a big fish or a, a, a shark in a small pond, but when you a shark among sharks. You know, it's eat or get eaten. You know? Yeah, but Marvin, yeah. I ain't lying. You, 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 you drop some knowledge far from the norm because usually you be sounding like a tired Waffle House worker. But now you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you did that. Oh, 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 oh. Scattered and splattered, didn't oh. he? Yeah, I did. That just oh, out. wow! Uh, Man. <laughs> and I was trying but, to go to Waffle House tonight, man. <laughs> hey, man, listen, hey, hey, uh, hey, Stephen. Let me, I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah, stay out of listen, let, me, let me tell you something. I, I, I you, you see, since since you, you got married, you starting to get get unprofessional. Do you realize we heard people getting their hair done, fighting in the background? Everybody, everybody's getting. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, hey, you heard. Hey somebody, wanna, somebody, wanna... somebody, hey, somebody said, damn, grab my ear. So your husband, your husband. <laughs> <laughs> now, where else edges. can you get I content number, like this? I want a number one with a short bob cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me when I say, Steven, you need to go to another room. Yeah, that woman, that woman is mob, and that woman beating on him. She is beating on him. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought I heard no. some water boy going true. on over there. Like she was like she was hitting his no. feet with a piece of wood. He yeah, was trying to hold I, I heard him say under his breath, I'm sorry, Ike. <laughs> <laughs> Justin? Come on now. We're supposed to get on this, Justin. We hey, you know what? Hey, Justin. Justin, I forgot. It's something before we bring in our next guest. We forgot because Steven got cut out. You didn't tell us about how practice was going. Or did he? Well, yeah, let's go ahead and, and and while we wait on Derek, Stephen M., one of the things that's been a hot topic since last night is Tyrell Harrell's uh, his, his his progress. But also there's been rumblings that he's not quite having a good time adjusting 
And so I want you to go ahead and talk about that and dispel any rumors that are going on because you know you know how social media gets. So if you would, just go ahead and talk about Tyra Harrell and what Ty fans can expect from him. Well, he came in in the summer from Louisville and uh, apparently must have had a small injury before he came in. Nobody reported on it, but Saban said he's not quite 100% yet, though he has been practicing. But Saban also said they're trying to get him to channel his focus to uh, be right in there with the team. Uh, I guess when you're coming from a different program, it's kind of hard to buy into the culture here, but he is in practice. So Bryce Young spoke today about the speed is there. The young man's got the speed. He can get up and down the field as a wide receiver. Uh, Bryce and Harrell are bounced ideas off of each other, so he's fine. It's just with him, whatever injury he had upon coming in, getting that fully corrected and then him kind of just starting to understand the Alabama culture. Because you're coming from Louisville where you're not necessarily winning a whole lot to an Alabama. Yo, championship or nothing, right? So it's kind of he's kind of finding his way into this culture. So 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 what's do you know his injury? You don't know what his injury or what's his ailment? Because I ain't gonna lie, I hope I hope it ain't crabs because crabs will make you change your route. <laughs> Maybe you should have spoke to him about the moon winks before he got here, Steve. <laughs> yes. I, I had crabs. I, 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 de- I, I, I don't I def- <laughs> I definitely don't think it's crabs, but I don't know what the injury is. But whatever Long, it is, hey. it has to be pretty minor because he is in practice. Well, as long as Steve and him not reading his x ray, we're going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> really? Figure out really? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Marvin's back. Marvin's back. Oh, he, oh, he's back. Black shirt on and all. He back. <laughs> yeah, he back. He, he, that, that, that mean, that mean he came, he came with violence on his mind. So, so what, so what about the defense? What do you hear about the defense? Uh, more specifically, Steve. Pete yeah. Golden spoke on Sunday. Yeah, go ahead. Pete, go- Pete Golden spoke on Sunday. Marvin's favorite. Did he night. apologize Pete to Golden us? Spoke on Sunday. <laughs> did, was, did he tell was us he, he was sorry? A, a, for the last actually, three years? actually, 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 Marvin, he did. He did apologize. Yeah. Was he drunk? He should have apologized to us. <laughs> well, yeah. it's becoming okay. his thing. He, he wasn't. <laughs> he, he, he wasn't drunk. He, he wasn't drunk, Steve. But he did Ms. apologize. Tipsy? He said, "Hey, na- he said last year was my fault." He goes that last year was my fault. We we, we, we we did not do what we were supposed to do. We did not end the right way, and that's my fault. He took it. Now what is that he, not what I was saying all season? It, it was. He, it was. So so he, in he, retrospect, he, I go ahead and send him my and, cash app, and he'll send me all the money back I lost because they ain't cover these spreads, right? <laughs> Hey man, you Marvin always got some personal bet going on. You know, he does. <laughs> Didn't you make up for that lost money with those t-shirt sales? So yeah, it's kind of broke he even. <laughs> hey man, listen, so we're not gonna talk them. about the t-shirt funds, okay? That's a, we swept that under the rug. We tried yeah, to you did. break it up. Okay. You know you got a whole now. new line waiting for this season. So go ahead and just reveal what that's gonna look hey, like. Hell yeah. Amen. Now, Steve. Hey, now, Steve. Hey, hey, you know what? Also, if, 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 if the defense, if the defense does what it's supposed to do, Marvin, you're gonna have to ship them t-shirts to some third world country. <laughs> I'm sitting down in Mississippi with Justin. It. <laughs> it is third world country. So you say you're gonna see kids from Zamunda wearing his shirts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm see my son the trailer park wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so 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 uh, okay so one, one other thing and we can we can we can keep it moving so i just i was on twitter and i saw uh before they disabled my account i think that i saw the the ex wife getting receiver. beat again Steve, yeah. Steve beat again. <laughs> hey, hey so so is he on the team I ain't or beat. not is he on the team what's his name a is he on with texas or what texas he 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 is with texas he is there he is there. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, he, he got into a Twitter war with people here recently when they were accusing him of not doing work and not buying in and, and having to go to team meetings already about his behavior. Oh, really? Well, 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 I mean, juicy juicy juice so that I leave you alone? I just gave him a juicy <laughs> juice. <laughs> this is, this and it took the last one. This is <laughs> well, tell him to sh- Steven, nah, there is yeah, one uh-huh. Don't you tell your wife that and get you get 
No, we do you not. You don't want run to... your household, man. Hey, man, we do not want to witness a murder. <laughs> don't you get hey, that one? hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but but but, but uh, if we do, point the camera over there so we can see what's going on. Uh, I see you. I see you in your house. We ain't, we ain't point. Marvin, we 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 finna continue with this show, man. <laughs> we finna continue with this show. <laughs> but I ain't doing that. I'll, I'll reel it back oh, while, while we wait on Derek. Derek has had technical difficulties, but before he, we get that situated out, Stephen M, there is uh, one person I want to talk to you about. We talked about him before the show, and that was four-star linebacker from the recent recruiting class, Ian Jackson, out of Prattville. Uh, according to you, he has really been showing out here lately in practice. What's the word on Ian? Not just me, Pete Golden. <laughs> so Pete, Pete Golden he's talking about the first about us right now. He just apologized to us. He's still in the doghouse. Sh- okay, Martin. well, I'm just speak. I- I'm just speaking the facts. Pete Golden said Ian has improved. Now, Ian, Ian came in a little bit overweight, a little slightly overweight there, and he came in. You no, know, Ian was on that McDonald's Burger King diet. You know, that, that, oh, that, that Chad Ochocinco died, the McDonald's Burger King. And so, so was he a Tennessee Ian commit originally? To <laughs> I don't think he was a Tennessee commit originally, but he was on that <laughs> McDonald's Burger King diet. So he's, he, he's, he started to finally understand, I got to eat right. So now that he's eating right, he's doing better. Okay, so Stephen, let me ask you this. What's the guy's name I forgot? This guy looked like uh, the damn Incredible Hulk. The guy, I think he wears number 40. He's a linebacker. Kendrick uh, Blackshire. 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 Oh, my. Blackshire. Is, is he going to, you think he going to get some playing time this year? Because that boy looked like a freak. He need to. He, a, he an Avenger. He need to. He an Avenger, absolutely. That boy, <clears throat> that boy, that boy Transformer, Avenger, Captain America, Black Panther, all of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Speaking of a guy good. who's who's going to have a breakthrough, and I'm going to go ahead and say this: come midseason on the defensive line, Jaheim Otis will be starting. This man is already uh, ca- causing some serious issues right now in practice. He went from four sixteen to three th- three forty three. He's got that killer mindset. This this dude's going to be a force. And when, oh, 16. And when Will and, 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 look, 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 and when, and when and when Will Anderson says that you distract him, you're doing something. Will is saying I get distracted watching Jaheim Otis get in the backfield and sacking people. So if you distract the Will Anderson, you're doing something right. Y'all said he started out at 413. 416. Well, he well. He was recruited by Pete Golden in the eighth grade. He was four sixteen, and he went from four sixteen to three forty two, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Man, he's on the water now, wasn't he? <laughs> but listen, uh, your guy Henry T. Marvin has been doing some things too. So. Stephen M, go ahead. Let's talk about Henry T a little bit because he's been on the mind of everybody from what I understand. He's grasping everything a lot better. He's making better decisions, and he's reverting back to his Tennessee form. I want to hear what you guys say about it, although we are taking it with a grain of salt because of Ben Davis. Hey man, listen, 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 listen. You know, you you know who I'm excited to see play? I'm I'm excited to see. The other inside linebacker play. What's his name? Moody. Taylor Moody. Moody. He's he's tested and proven. He's a head buster. I've seen I've seen Tor Tor miss too many damn tackles and and lay people down and all that other stuff. And then I've also seen it, it, I've seen it too many times. Whereas I've I've literally seen Marvin hit the hole, go head up with a running back. I've seen this Marvin. It's real talk. And you drove the running back back into the hole. You, I've seen Toa Toa make contact with a running back, and the running back drags him three yards down the field. That ain't good to me. I've I was, I've just you know I've always had that concern. I, oh, I yeah, think, absolutely. I, think, I mean, Valid. he's just not, he's just he ain't physical. He ain't physical. He's just not. You know, as a linebacker, you gotta control the sticks. No defense coordinator wants to be. I, I'm talking to everybody over here. I ain't talking. I didn't say it. It wasn't me. <laughs> It wouldn't be. Hey, Stephen M., uh, uh, no, blink if you need us to call no somebody. Hey, I'm good, man. I'm chilling. 
I'm on four chips. Because... He's five. I'm go, go ahead, Mark. What's say now? But no defensive coordinator wants to be in second and five or second and four because at that point, the uh, offensive coordinator, his, his full playbook is at his disposal at that point. So, you know, making tackles five yards downfield, that's not beneficial to a defense. You know, because most teams are going to run the ball on first down. Boom. Stop them. Now you, you know, second and eight, second and nine. Now you got that offense in a position where they, you've taken away some of their play calls. That's not the, that's not what's been happening. But Marv, Marv, another thing that aggravates me, he would make a he would make the hit, but the person would break the tackle, or they would drive him on downfield. Or right. not, not only that, I'm, no, look, look, I'm gonna tell you something that makes that to me that makes you a physical inside linebacker. I've seen inside linebackers make that hit and drive or whatever, but this guy is usually trying to strip the ball. The inside linebacker is supposed to be the one who's making, who's supposed to be punishing him. He, he, but he's he, he trying to strip the ball off, and they going three, three or four yards on downfield. But you know the thing that drives my blood pressure up the highest when you tackle this. Go man, ahead, all, that pork, that, all that pork you be after, eating. All that, <laughs> nah, nah. Listen, after you tackle this man five yards downfield, after he just rubs you for two or three up, and you jump up celebrating like you didn't just did something. Yeah, I, I ain't. You know what, man. Now, 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 Justin. The way I'm thinking, I could understand why he was high, highly touted at Tennessee because was nobody at Tennessee that good. Now, what's going on to me? And I'm not going off on him. Man, he just got a lot to prove this year to me. I, I, I mean, because you gotta understand, like Marvin said, you know, you the middle linebacker and you out there on the field with a bunch of sharks, but you ain't playing like no shark. So it's like like you being you 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 being you being hidden, you know, by the defense. Cause everybody else out there hitting hard. You know, J- everybody knows Jalen Moody is a hitter. Everybody knows he's a head, he's a head hunter. But dude, you're our middle linebacker. I've never seen a middle linebacker who 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 has hit somebody in the backfield and they and you still get driven mm-hmm. for two or three yards. That's and, and, and here's the bottom line, Steve. The middle and, linebacker. And, Steve, and, and, and not only are you making a thud hit, you dragging people down. Marvin, I've never seen you do that. Dragging people down. But the middle down. linebacker should be the focal point of that defense. Everybody else usually feeds off that middle linebacker. You are supposed to be that intimidating force. You are supposed to be the man that drives home everybody else. You're supposed to be that guy that everybody's supposed to fear. Not the guy that they say, hey, we're going to rip at him. They see, Ken right there, Ken right there. Real quick, we do have somebody in the weight room that a lot of people feared. Stephen M. Smith, if you would, introduce this man. Oh, shit, I'm going to go. Oh they, oh, oh, they feared him because he was only one of the greatest running backs to come in the Crimson Tide era. A 1992 national champion that played with the great Gene Stallings. This guy kept Jay Barker happy during the daytime. This guy kept a lot of people happy during the daytime. He even had some fun running through guys like Curry and Copeland. We're going to bring in a Ooh. man that can still drop that lumber with that weight. We know he's toting them guns. We got Derek oh, Jurassic son. in here, baby. <laughs> Welcome back, sir. Hey, 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 right. hey, Justin. Hey. Justin Quick, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Quick question. Henry Toa told you run it at him or you running away from him. Either way, don't make no difference. Depending <laughs> depend on the distance. Depend hey, on Derek. The hey Derek, let me tell you something, man. And this is uh, Justin, I'm telling the God honest with this is no joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was at my partner's club just about an hour or two ago. We were talking. We were talking about college football. They started bringing up the U. Man, we had people this and that, this and that. This. We had people scared. I mentioned, I said, y'all had people scared until y'all seen Derek Lassick. That's the, the truth. The whole club got quiet. You got your respect from the Miami <laughs> fans, dude. You got your respect. When I mentioned your name, I was like, man. And then, I, but I lied a little bit. I told him that I played right behind you when you got tired. But same <laughs> so, so you were, you were carrying the ball before Sherman? Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome in, Derek. That you have made it to our illustrious five timers club. So congratulations on achieving that little victory there. But yeah, glad to have you on as always. So. I see some NIL now. 
I, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got four ninety nine on our super chat from Jamie Wilhelm earlier. We can always cash app that to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. $499, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but since you won the greatest run backs of all time, got to start out asking this question. You know, we have a load of backfield going into this season, and they're all healthy. Two questions. One, what kind of damage can this group to do? And two, can you also remind Poole just how loaded your running back room was? Well, I'm going to answer the first question, and I'll answer the second question. The first part of that question was, how loaded is this team? We don't know yet. They have a lot of talent, but we all know the offensive line makes that offense go, whether it's the running game or the passing game. So you can have a lot of studs in the backfield, but if you don't have any continuity in the front at the line mm. of scrimmage, it's going to be hard to be successful, as we saw at times last year. Now, we had in our backfield, it was – my senior year you're talking about? or Yeah, your senior but, year. So it was myself. It was Chris Anderson. It was Sherman Williams. It was Tarrant Lynch. Ooh. Tarrant Lynch was a problem. Ooh. He just ate his fullback position. Uh, we had Mark Houston. He hung. Uh, yeah, we had a pretty low backfield. That's an understatement, man. <laughs> but uh, each season, there's always that gut check game. Uh, one of those games for you was in 1992 against Mississippi State. You balled out, but it was one of those games where we had to fight all the way to the end. Uh, can you talk about overcoming the adversity in that game? You know, Mississippi State always played the stuff of the years that I was there. It, it was the LSU of, of Nick Saban's era, you know, where you know if you're going to be in for a dog fight. We may win the game, but we know we were in the game because you'd be sore as heck yeah. the next couple of days. So that was always, Jack and Cheryl always had his, his kids ready to play. I mean, make me busy. So who yeah, do you mean? Jackie, Jackie made it a point to scour the junior colleges across the world to bring in them junior college players. He kept a team full of junior college players. Well, well he had the NIL going before it was the NIL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, was, he was playing those Juco cats and, and some of the guys coming out of high school. But, you know, I, I mean, that was the rumor. That's all right. I got it on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie knows he had a good – he got a a program that he paid for. And didn't he come from Texas a and Sure did. Yeah. See how that yeah. goes the circle? I mean, wow. Circle. You, know what they, you know what we say, a hit dog will holler, right? So yeah. why did Jimbo Fisher get so mad if he didn't do anything wrong? You can accuse me of anything you want. If I know I'm innocent, well, prove it. And, you know, Nick Saban didn't say he did anything wrong. He cheated. He just stated the facts. Yeah, they took it well, did you, but, but then, Darryl, did you, you see the recruiting video? video? Yeah. Of their recruiting yeah, coordinator? Yeah, I saw the video. Telling the players? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> he didn't say that they were going to give you NIL money. We know the boosters make the 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 – the program go, you know what I'm saying? So that's what he meant to say. You know, the boosters in but those boxes. But the people up there in those boxes. Boxes, are the which, are the, thing, which are the boosters. Which, you know, they contribute to the university. So in, in indirectly, they're paying you. You know what I'm saying? But we know what he meant, though. <laughs> well, so, yeah. so 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 how, how do you become a booster? Do I need to go back to school to become a booster? What, what you got to do? No, you got <laughs> enough paper now, Stephen. Now that you know, made a lot of paper, and you can make donations to the university on half of Stephen Brown, and you become a booster. Hey, Derek, let me do, Derek, do me a favor. Listen, I'm going to say this on this show. Don't you ever in your life call me Stephen Brown. That's because people don't love. And when people hear Stephen, it messes up my street credibility. So, right. let's say Steve. You, you the right, man. You know, I'm going, I'm, I see your name on the screen, so I want to be put politically correct i know man but see what, justin why did you do that now you man i can't be slapping people well, in the club i was told about to... steven did it come on man <laughs> I was I'm going ahead to no, no you'll be okay they then. Name if they said steven did it you said yeah that was my that was my alter ego steve that did it not in steven man, steven is the one you know in front of stage yeah. and doing it that man Man, these people are gonna be jumping on me now, man. <laughs> you go ahead and come a booster. 
they gonna name, they gonna name a manhole cup after you. <laughs> hey man, shut up, man. Man, now 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 I'm gonna be getting jumped on like Stephen M. Smith wife jumping on him. Damn, I'm not getting jumped on, man. I'm I, it's already happened. happened. It hasn't happened. Hey Steve, uh, now what, Marvin, I want you to look at the crystal ball, Stephen, and who's gonna be the next big recruit that uh, commits to Alabama? Yes, next Tell big us. recruit. It's quiet yeah. right Keon, now. Keon Keeley, flipping oh. him from Notre Dame. Oh, that's gonna happen. You think? I think what it's going it? to because you got you got two, you got three of our, you got three commits already trying to flip him right now. Yeah, yeah, I've heard them guys trying to flip him. He's a beast too. Now watching he's, his film, he's, he's a beast. He's a beast. If you if you can get him with the kid from Carver High School, Big James Smith, mm -hmm. you get both of those two, you got something. Yeah. Jay Smith is more of a power guy. Uh, that the Keeley guy, who he he comes off that edge kind of like Will Anderson. He's finesse. He, he, he's finesse. He, he got quickness. He, he he can finesse you. Hey man, you know what? I'm I'm. I mean, y'all talking about the recruits, but I ain't gonna lie. I'm with Marvin on something, which I really agree with Marvin. But I really believe that Will Anderson is going to get doubled and triple teamed so much. Dallas Turner is going to get off like none before he's probably going to end up leading the, leading the team in in sacks i believe that and, and and not just dallas turner getting off chris braswell number mm -hmm. 41 will get off you know what let's I mean, let's did. not you know what let's you, let's just say play well i don't like get off that don't sound right let's just say this play well, well. 41 41 and 15 will both do damage they'll do their thing yeah I like that all right marvin, what are we saying marvin must be muted justin we can't hear him that's a good thing. That's God. <laughs> God. That's God. That's God. Well, hey, oh. hey, with friends like you, you don't need no enemies. <laughs> exactly. Now that's the Steve right there. That's Steve. That's Steve. Uh, well, Derek, I am. Uh, I'm interested to hear your take on the two running backs, the two-headed monster we just got out of this recruiting class, Justice Haynes and Richard Young. What's your overall take on them? And do you see any similarities between them and you and Sherman? Well, you know, I hadn't looked at it that way. The similarities I look at, the, the Justin Haynes cat reminds me so much of Zeke Elliott. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm. You know, he, he he's compact. He can break. He has the breakaway speed, but he will run you over. Uh, the, the other back, uh, he kind of reminds me of a, um, a Lennis, Leonard Fournette when I mm. watch his high school footage. They kind of have a similar running style, mm -hmm. but you know, I mean, high school is one thing. You know, playing the Division One is another thing. Um, hopefully, it'll translate and they'll have just as much success at the next level as they did in high school. But you know, this is the way to go nowadays. You know, you want two, three head monsters as a running back, so you don't wear out your treads, and you mm -hmm. hopefully go to the league and you can have an eight-year career. For as a running back, because we know, you know, running backs don't last long in the league. 30 years old is pretty much, you know, the tapping point. Ancient. Yeah. You know what? Hey, so you, you mentioned Sherman and and nobody said this, but I got to say it. I got to send him a major shout out. I think he got a, his first head coaching job, right? He's a head he coach now. So yeah. shout out to Sherman, man. That's that, right. that's a real good look because, I mean, that's yeah. a lot of knowledge. Yeah. And then there's a I'm sorry. At Williamson High School, is it? Yes, sir. And the thing yeah. is, man, I love it because they're they're getting a guy with experience on both levels, and and he, I mean, he's just a, 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 a household name when it comes to Bama. So that so when you look at his highlight tapes, like yours, the kids are going to buy in. They're going to buy in automatically. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was a that was a that was a win for Williamson High School. It really was. So shout out to Sherman. So 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 Derek, my, my thought to you is uh, coming from high school to college. For, for running backs to have to pick up pass blocking, because in high school they probably didn't have to do much pass blocking. They just got the ball and went with it. So hey, how, how how do you get that skill down in terms of pass blocking? I'm gonna tell it you. It didn't pass that much in '92. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you about right. We didn't pass that much in '92, but we practiced pass blocking. And I'm gonna tell you, my first experience was going against Derek Thomas. So I got to go I got to block Derek Thomas. You know, I mean, Derek Thomas, I know he can rush the quarterback and stuff like that. So, you know, I go up there. I said, okay, I'm going to just go and just uh, lunge at him. You know, lunge. So I, I lunge. I got my eyes closed. Hey, 
damn, where'd he go? You know? <laughs> Freshman, get back up there. Get back up there. I'm like, damn, they're going to make me go against him again? And then this guy named William Amalong, they sent. William was a big Samoan from California. He just ran me slap. I kept my eyes open, <laughs> but he ran me <laughs> slap over. You know, I thought he was going to do like Derek did. And man, well, I'm looking up. Freshman, get your A double S out there. <laughs> I was like, shoot, I don't know if I'm ready for this yet. <laughs> hey, you know what, Derek? was funny about that? Now, the coaches said, freshman, get your A double S out of there. But they were telling Marvin that as a senior. So listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, Marvin, I, now, I don't know. Marvin was a problem now. He sure was. He child, was child, child, child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he didn't start talking until the eighth grade. He was a problem child. <laughs> well, he was a silent, he was a silent assassin. That's it. He's just a hater. He's silent. Mad. He didn't make when, when has Marvin ever been silent, Derek? <laughs> when he, when he was muted a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> I'm not muted no more. <laughs> hey guys, listen, I got, I got, I gotta go because I gotta wash dishes. But man, listen, I'm a, um, don't do that. Don't do that. But listen, hey Derek, it's always good seeing you, man. Marvel talk. Talking and, about uh, street guys trade, road talk. You talking about huh? street trade? And you gotta wash dishes. Hey man, I'm putting my business in the street. So that's what I'm gonna go. That's why I don't like this show no more. Uh, I'm gonna have a hat in it. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. Uh, what? <laughs> Why you wearing a hairnet, sir? Hey man, <laughs> shut up! Bye. You gotta get the lineup in Camp Eight. <laughs> but but the one thing I was trying to say a minute ago is you got these two running back highly touted. Derek, you can attest to this. Those stars don't mean anything in high school because a lot of these guys when they get college they don't pan out. And yeah. even if some of them do, they're not as good as projected because again, it's different when you're being hit by a kid who's five seven five eight one hundred sixty pounds versus these three hundred pounds six foot six dudes. Who ain't playing no games with you? It's a different ball game. I say it all depends too. I think they should look at the star rating depending on the level of competition that you play against. Everybody's saying that Arch Manning was the number one quarterback in Now the level of competition he played against wasn't like some of the competition some of those kids out in California and Florida played against on a week in and week out basis. So yeah, he can look like a five star against no stars and two stars. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he has the pedigree. We know that. But can he play at that next level where everybody is as on his level? You know, that's to be determined. So, you know. Derek, I, don't I can go out there with my knee replacement and put up some stats against the kids who he playing against. <laughs> I mean, uh, our defensive backs of Alabama are bigger than the defensive line that he faces week after week. I looked at one of the, the highlight film. Man, them kids were so little. I'm like, <laughs> Is this who y'all gonna rate this man based upon? He ain't playing against, and I ain't seen none of us out there. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I, saw see none of us I saw him play against a team from Florida, and they beat them. And they and they was going up and down the field on, on them. Uh, I think it was his sophomore year. One running back had like 200 yards, I, I, about 200 receiving yards, scored like eight touchdowns. He just ran down the field. Had a video game performance, didn't he? Oh yeah, he he really did. And that defense, you know, they that defense from Florida was them Florida boys was getting it out the mud on him. <laughs> he threw a couple of picks. He didn't look good that game. That's why I say I'm sorry, but he ain't playing against none of us. So you know, I, they they ain't closing quite as fast. And you know, you as they gonna be in the college when he get up there, because you know who them corners gonna be when he get to hey. college. <laughs> When you say none of us, you mean the four or five stars, or you mean uh? <laughs> I mean, oh, not the, hey, not the Jimmys and Joes, but the Tyrones and Le Leroy's. <laughs> hey, 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 Derek, and little Tim Tim. Don't forget little Tim Tim. Yeah, wait, we we, just do just a, we do just a little different. Listen, when I played in high school, we had teams. We had Mount Vernon. We had New Rochelle, we had White Plains, we had Spring Valley. Those were predominantly black schools. Now, I knew we was going to win the game, but they were going to make sure I paid. They hit me every play. They, <laughs> We know what they're going to give you the ball, you're going to feel it. So I knew those see, games, that was going to be extra soft. See, see, my high school, they were smart. They brought in a, a, a white coach who could, have all, who could teach all the fundamentals in the world, fundamentals in the world, to all these black athletes. 
and it and it paid dividends. He brought that skill level to all these athletes, and there was nobody who could touch us. You know, because it's one thing you got athletes who don't have fundamentals. He taught us the game. Yeah. So yeah, we was out there executing folks. But you know what I'm talking about? When you throwing the ball out there on a corner who five eight, he ain't one of us. I'm sorry, yeah. he ain't gonna close on that ball. But yeah, you got corner out there who went a, a four two, four three forty, and you throw that little duck up there, it's going the other way. Yes, eighty eight, not the gate the other way. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I'm not gonna say that. You know, he was overhyped. You know, I, I, I'm just to be perfect. Come on now, who, who's perfect? They're giving him a thousand rating. Come on now. Has he been hit by anybody of significance yet? Well, he will. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, we gonna see you sink or swim. And two, he going to Texas. Texas. Oh man, they and they about to be SEC weekend and we out now. Yeah, that's in two years, twenty twenty five. Go ahead, Justin. That'll be his, that'll be his that'll be his sophomore. But honestly, I think that Texas is gonna come over after this season because they got them other schools coming in already um, next year. So yeah, it's they, gonna create a schedule. They'd have to pay a hefty fine. That's the only thing I know. But you know they already got those other schools coming to the Big Twelve. So you can't keep all those schools in the Big Twelve that you got coming in. Plus Texas oh, and um. Huh? Coming twenty twenty four. The other teams. Twenty twenty three, twenty twenty in the twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four, they coming. Okay, okay. So you're gonna keep all the schools you got coming in, plus Texas, Oklahoma. When I seen it happen, I'm like, oh, they gonna let them out early because there's no way they can keep all those schools in that conference. Okay. So he gonna be in trouble week in and week out. Well, I just want you know, I just can't wait. I, listen, this is one of the seasons I'm most excited to get started. Because like Nick said, and I, I agree with him, he did a heck of a coaching job last year. They were rebuilding. Because to lose all that talent, George is going to find out how it is. The East is kind of weak, so they may not struggle as much week in and week out like hey. we last year. But they're hey, going to struggle. Derek, I'm going to give you a prediction right now. Tennessee going to win the East. Well, Tennessee got a squad now. Tennessee, Tennessee going to win the East. Yeah, but you, Tennessee defense got a – George is always going to have a strong defense. Like Kurt, like Nick said, gone are the days where you going to score you, – games are going to be 10 or something. Well, Georgia proved that wrong. Georgia proved right? that wrong. Only we scored over 30, 20 points against Georgia's defense last year, right? So it's mm -hmm. yeah. done. So, you know, but they've lost so much talent. But I think offensively, they'll be able to control the line of scrimmage and the clock. Because, you know, Tennessee likes to toss the ball all over the place. Oh, but Tennessee bringing some horses back. Tennessee where, bringing most of that team back now. Where, where are they playing? Knoxville. They're going to be in Knoxville. Uh oh. Tennessee got everybody in Knoxville. We in Knoxville too, aren't we? Yep. Uh -huh. But Tennessee's bringing back a, a good bit of talent this year. And you look at how they and, played us last year. We struggled with them up to the third quarter. Including the two best players they bring back. You got the quarterback, Kendon Hooker. You got the wide receiver, Cedric Tillman. They're both back. But, you know, it's always in the back of your mind, that's Bama. They, how, what, listen, we in the lead. How are we going to lose this game? You know, until you beat us, and Tennessee hasn't beaten us in so long, it's like the block with Cody. You know, and last year they, they, they had us on a rope. That's Bama. They're just going to find a way to beat us. So it's – you got to – their mindset. Yeah, Tennessee, back, you know what I'm saying? But they're bringing some nice pieces back, though. They're bringing some very nice pieces back. So are we. No, I'm talking about when they play George. I ain't talking about against us. Oh, okay, okay. I, you know, I just think – I just think Pope Kirby Smart uh, outcoached uh, the young man at uh, Tennessee. We're going to see. And I'm also looking to see what Kentucky going to do. Kentucky has gotten better every year. Every the, team year. That, at the team I thought you were going to say was Arkansas. Now, that's Arkansas. the team I'm looking at. That's yeah. the team I'm looking at. Well, watch what I tell you now. Arkansas is going to be for that coach. Is, boy, he got them boys playing. To go, oh, they, to go they, up there. They, to, they took us down to the wild to go to, to, to drive up there to Penn County this year? Yeah, we got a lot of tough away games. Yeah. But we got the great equalizer. Nick Saban and that juggernaut of an offense. 
<laughs> well, I tell you what, Pete Golden better be on this damn game this year and stop playing around. Oh, uh, he know it. That DUI after the DUI, he Marvin, Marvin, the man, Marvin, the man apologized just for you. He apologized just for you. Hey, man, like my mama always say, that apology don't mean nothing if it ain't got no action behind it. Yeah, man, you know, like that. Uh, 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 right, okay. Your defense. And the fact that he felt the need to apologize, that tells you right there he knew he'd been screwing up the past three years. Well, he knows they haven't been playing up to Alabama standard, you know, defensively. Now, we know the offenses have changed, and we're not going to be the dominant mm -hmm. defense we were. But at times, the defense looks so confused and so lethargic. And that's a reflection of your coach. You see how exciting, uh, uh, excited uh, Kirby Smart and, and Jeremy Pruitt mm -hmm. would be on the side. And must champ. Yeah, they're getting out, you know, and that's and they're gonna that's gonna that's a reflection of the coach. He over there looking like he lost. So of course they're gonna be out there like they lost. <laughs> you know, I mean Pete Golden, I you listen, you got one more game. And I'll say it again, Texas AM put up 40 points on us with a backup quarterback and two true freshmen starting offense alignment in their first game. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we Come were on running, now. running around like a chicken with our heads cut off. But we got the talent now, and they've been in the system. Listen, listen. Just let the, simplify the game and, and let them boys do their thing. That's We got the yeah. most, probably the most talented defense in the country. Let them so, if, so if he doesn't get it right this year, then what? Ass out. <laughs> <laughs> because because you know Sarkeesian is going to try to expose him week two. Well, he's going to expose him. But you know, we, we got that great equalizer, that damn offense. I just hope our offensive line plays halfway better than they did last year. Then we'll average about 40 points. But eight. you got to think about it, though, Derek. Think about all the days when Sarkeesian went against Pete at practice at Bama. If anybody going to know how to expose him, it's going to be Sarkeesian. Yeah, but, can, but does he have the horses to stop us on defense? Probably not. So you're looking at a shootout, last one with the ball possibly winning. But how yeah. many games can we go into like that? Because we still got to play Lane, and you know Lane gonna bring some dumb, some dumb stuff. <laughs> but see, listen, I know they're gonna start that freshman quarterback, and it's gonna be the second game. So I think Nick Saban gonna do stuff from the secondary to kind of confuse him. You know what I'm saying? And we get a pick here or there. I think the the difference in the game is gonna be turnovers. I don't think we'll turn the ball over. I think they will. And that's going to be the difference in the ball game. Derek, I have to go back to something you mentioned earlier, uh, and it's, it's very important. Speaking of our defense, you spoke up about going against Derek Thomas. You know, uh, quite arguably the best to ever do it at linebacker, not only at Alabama but college football and possibly the NFL. How legitimate is the claim that Will Anderson is the second coming of Derek Thomas? Well, based on his performance, I mean, you'd have to put him right there. With DT, DT did it consistently. He he did it three years in a row. So if he can do it this year and put up the numbers that he put up last year, you know, and DT was getting double teamed all the time also. I mean, that's the great thing about him. You know, he, he was doing it and he was getting double teamed. You know, DT could – he was as fast as a running back or a wide receiver. He was as quick as anybody I've ever seen to be that size. And he mm -hmm. was strong as I don't know what. You know, God just blessed him. He's one of those rare breeds. You know, I don't, I haven't seen Will Anderson up close and personal like I did DT and play against him. But from what I see on TV, there's there's a lot of similarities. So you had to deal with him and Keith McCants at the same time? Man, what was it like leaving practice? <laughs> Keith McCants messed me up. So I, I'm the starter going into the season. Keith McKenzie tackles me, lands on me. It's it's thud, and separates my shoulder. <laughs> right, right in fall camp. Oh, man, I was so mad. Saran Stacy went off those two first two or three games, and it was wrapped. <laughs> yeah, you know, did. we was gonna split the starting position. You know what I'm saying? But I was up first. And, and man, when he was going off, I'm sitting in the hospital. I just shaking my head. Damn, there goes my job. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get hurt when you in Bama, man. You can't get hurt. <laughs> like McCl the uh, what the kid's name from Texas? McC McC Colt McCoy. No, the running back at Alabama that hurt his knee last year from Texas. Oh, you know? oh, 
won. Jace McClellan. Yeah, McClellan. He was going to – I think he would have taken over the starting He, he was. I agree. He had. Yeah, he had. It, it, it hurt because, yeah, he was doing some things, man. So, you know, just unfortunate for, unfortunately for him, he got hurt. You know, B-Rob was a good bat, but, you know, he wasn't – he not elite. You know, you can see McClellan, McClellan, McClellan has that elite ability. You know, he can make people miss. He has that burst. You know, it'd probably take him a year to get it back. So I'm not looking for him to do a lot this year. But next year, watch out. He also had those burners, that top end speed to separate himself from the defense. No one could chase him down. Yeah, he he he, he was he was a he was a heck of a back. He reminded me of uh, one of them backs. The back, what's the back name at Cincinnati? That's Joe Mixon. Mixon. That's who he reminds me of. You know, great balance, hard to bring down, can catch the ball out the backfield. Yeah, no doubt. Now, Alabama's loss to Georgia in the national championship is one of the driving factors, or I guess fuel for this season. You faced something similar in 1991. Your only loss was against Florida, you know, 35 to nothing. How much did that loss fuel 1992? Oh, that's all we talked about. You know, we talked about going undefeated. We knew about the SEC championship game. We knew we weren't going to play them in the regular season. So we said, hey, we need to do our job to get into the SEC championship team. And hopefully they can do their job to get in the SEC championship and we can get that revenge. I thought we were going to whoop them a lot worse than, you know, <laughs> they had me nervous. <laughs> but going into the game, I had no, you know, no doubt that we were going to win the game. I was like, there's no way they're going to be because their record wasn't that good anyway. And our defense was so stout, especially against the pass. I said, man, there's no way. That little shuffle pass. So, so, so what did Langham do wrong that game <laughs> that made the game close? He was getting beat the whole game. The whole damn game. <laughs> I'ma just tell the truth. I'ma tell the truth and shame the devil. They were running the same play the whole game. He decides to take a chance at the end of the game. I guess he got fed up and he finally called on and said, Now listen, they're gonna run this out and I'm gonna go jump it and pick it off. And sure enough, I don't even think Matthews looked. He just closed his eyes and threw the out. Yeah. <laughs> now let me now I'm gonna tell you. I, <laughs> So, so I was on the phone with him and Teague one day, right? <laughs> and and Teague said, Langham, you, you, man, all you ever want to do is, man, you got my back. I'm about to, I'm about to go do, I'm about to go try something. Langham said, that was him all year long. How about you got my back? I'm about to try something. Hold but on. Langham said he stayed leaving him on the island. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on. So, so, so Marvin, what you saying said. is, what you saying is Langham another Kenny? Is Langham another Kenny? Yeah, about like Kenny yeah. Smith. <laughs> Kenny yeah. Smith. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's funny. T has seen something. His... Man, you ain't seen nothing. Do it <laughs> Hey, man, I talk about having loaded. Our defense was loaded. We had Sam Shea. We had Joyce T. We had Langham. We had um, uh, Willie Jackson. Uh, uh, Tommy. Tommy. Tommy Johnson. Tommy Johnson. Oh, Tommy Johnson. I'm, I was so surprised when he didn't make it to the league. That kid had all the talent in the world. He had Whoa. the speed, you know, change of direction. He was a tough kid. D.P. Johnson. Yeah, what about your, your your man up front, James Gregory? Oh, yeah, Dick Gregory. I used to call him Dick Gregory. He <laughs> 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 eat, eat people alive, man. Oh, yeah. Underrated. Oh, man, let, let, let Langham tell it. Willie Gaston was one I was doing stupid stuff, getting y'all getting penalties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, hey, listen. Uh, um, you know Willie Jackson would, would he? I mean, yeah, he would do some. I know the coach <laughs> stayed on him. <laughs> where? 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 Coach Oliver. Where? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he was playing with. You know, Willie was young in '92. What was he? Was he a freshman that year or soft? He was a young kid. The, you know, the sophomore. Yeah. You know, to get on the field with that talent, you, you know, he was showed something. You had to have a little something to step on the field during that time for sure. Yeah. The only person I always questioned was Chris Donaldson. I said, man, I guess they put you on the field to increase our GPA or something. <laughs> Chris Donaldson. <laughs> <laughs> and he is that he, <laughs> he came, over, came over from Vanderbilt. I was like, man, well, you know, I guess that's what they're doing with the offensive linemen. They need to increase that GPA and 
uh, of the offensive line. They're going to put him on there and help out. But hopefully he can play a little better. than, than <laughs> I hope so, because last year, man, that was – I mean, we made it to the championship game, but that wasn't – what you would expect out of an Alabama football team right. on both sides of the ball. You know, again, it was uh, – if you watch football from a standpoint of a fan versus watching it as a standpoint of a former player, you see the game two completely different ways. Mm, yeah, most definitely. Like, I was down in the – I was down in the uh, – in my basement watching the game. I was telling Rick, if they keep playing like they playing now, they're going to get their butt with well, – against Auburn. I like they did Auburn's just whooping them. I ain't no no if ands and buts. Oh no, they they got no man. They just flat out out playing, them, you know. But SEC championship game, they need to eat whatever they ate before the pregame meal because <laughs> they were playing. They were giving fights, <laughs> and everything. I was like, is that the same offensive line? You know, but maybe the coming. Joe Pendry, we thank him for that. Yeah, yeah maybe Joe Pendry. Thank Joe. Yeah, coming from the NFL coach coming to the co- college, and they have more complicated, complex schemes. You know, you got, you got to simplify the schemes for these kids. You know, and and that's that's what a great coach does. He knows how to get a great scheme together, schem- schematic mm-hmm. uh, system where the kids get it, and they don't have to think. Because when you're an athlete, you don't want to have to think about what you're doing because you're gonna lose a step. As you know that. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what the defense was doing for the last three years. That's you want that defense? Trying to get Pete Gold to do. Well, see, you're a defensive guy, so I would be ashamed to call myself a defensive guy the way our defense has been playing the past couple of years. See, I'm an offensive guy. We've been doing our thing. Before I ask Especially- you one last question, Derek, uh, Stephen M. Smith, there's a question for you and from the audience. It's about JoJo Earl. Uh, he's hearing that he may be out eight to ten weeks for foot surgery. Uh, do you know anything about that? I, I have not heard anything about that on Earl, but I'm about to find this out now. But I have not heard that on JoJo Earl yet. What? You out the loop? You're fired. I mean, I, 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 have not, I have not found that. I have not seen that on Earl, though. I don't want to lose JoJo Earl, but if we were to lose at any position, receiver would be the position because I think we're loaded. We we have plenty. That's of true. Receivers. True. True. Yeah, I think we. Well, right about that one, Derek. Come in. Hopefully, they play better than they played in the championship game. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm talking about I'm Burton. Different and the breed, kid man. From, different mindset bro. with this group. Yeah, yeah. Burton and the kid from um, Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. yeah. Before we close up shop, Derek, I got to mention this to you. Uh, Langham talked about this last time he was on here. Um, <coughs> how hard should we be campa- campaigning to get John Copeland in the College uh, uh, Football Hall of Fame? You know, I, listen, I don't worry about stuff like that. People who played against Copeland, you know, and Co- we, we all know, you know, what type of player he was. I mean, if he's not in the College Football Hall of Fame, they shouldn't be one because he was unstoppable. Two years he was at Bama, he was unstoppable. You know, a lot of that stuff is popularity contest for the most true. part, too. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, some of us know how to kiss behind a little better than others. So you're going to get in there a little faster. I mean, really, I mean, that's, you know, you can't piss off the wrong person. I, and I don't know if Copeland, you know, has made anybody mad. <laughs> I got you. saying is Marvin Constant to be in the Hall of Fame right now. <laughs> <If he didn't... laughs> what the uh, knee replacement Hall of Fame, man? <laughs> College Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> Listen, I you, mean, you know, all that is fine and dandy, but I just want the the respect and accolades from the people I played with and against. You know what I mean? That's all. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, people have opinion about anything and everybody. So I consider myself a decent bat. You know, uh, yeah, there's been. A lot of bats of family have been better than I've been, but, you know, I got the job done. You know what I'm saying? You definitely had the best touchdown celebration of all time. Oh, well, now, I don't know Sherman. Right. I, like, I like that Sherman shake now. That shake was uh. – <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, Sherman's my boy. Now, you know, Sherman told me – he called me when he got the job and we talked because during the pandemic he would come over my house and me, him, and Curtis Brown would work out. Mm. Um, we, we became real close, you know what I'm saying? I was a couple of years older than Sherman, and we were cool, but we've developed a friendship, um, more of a friendship since he's, you know, 
um, been doing his book tours and things like that. If you sit down and talk to Sherman, Sherman is a bright individual. Uh, I, I'd have to put him in like the top 5% of athletes I've played with as far as intelligence. He's a very bright young man. No, without a doubt. People don't know that about him. They just think, you know, Sherman, a football player, and he wanted to get in trouble. But no, nah, he got he's he got plenty of sense. Oh, without question. Well, before we close things down, Marvin, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about 40 Plus Strong and what the latest developments are there and how people can get a hold of what you're doing. Man, you want to get a copy of the book, it's on Amazon. But the biggest thing is I finally got the swelling gone, man. About two days ago, all of the swelling from my knee replacement surgery has finally dissipated. It is finally gone. I actually ran for the first time in years Ooh. yesterday. Victory right there. That was there. my first time running in some years, man. So, you know, I didn't want to I didn't want to stress it out too much, but you know, it was just fun. And it was actually cool to be able to run again, you know, because again, you don't realize how much you miss something until you can't have you know, until you can't do it. And not to be able to do it for all those years and you know, six months later to be able to run again. I mean, it's been a long, rough road, man, but we here. We here. Listen, I can honestly say one thing I don't miss is running. <laughs> well, I don't – listen, you know, I didn't miss it in terms of, of, of the, the physical act of it, but you know how it's like, damn, I can't run no more. And you know, you – you know, you in your late thirties, early forties, and the fact that you can't run, it's more mental than anything else. And it's not the fact that you can't do it, the fact that your body won't can't handle it. So well, the that, fact that now that my body can handle it again, you know, I it was like, okay, cool. I'm not gonna do it again, but it was just cool to do that <laughs> so, 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 thirty, forties, I'm fifty something. I, yeah, keep running. I was running in my late thirties, early forties. Well, my knee, my knee had, it, my knee was, man, my knee was almost the size of a, a eight pound bowling ball, man. That thing was huge, man. And it had got so big, it was compressing my nerve in, in my leg and it was making my leg fall asleep from my knee down and I started falling. That's how bad it had got. Did, did, like, drain, drain hmm? the, did they drain any of the fluids out? You never got a drain? It, it, it wasn't a matter of draining the fluids. It was from the bone spurs and the arthritis. That thing was huge, man. It oh, wasn't even the free. This is pre-surgery. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's okay. Oh yeah. So like I said, you know, and when I when I when I got to the point where I couldn't walk anymore, that's when it started to scare me. Because I mean, you you know, I mean, come on now. At forty two, you know, you take ten steps and your leg fall asleep and you falling. That ain't normal at forty two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So you know, that's when it started to get scary, and that's when I knew, you know, okay, it's time. And when I went to go get my MRI, the guy who did my MRI, he looked at me and he was like, how do you even walk the steps that you walk at all? That's how bad it was. So when Dr. Kane, you know, at the surgery, he said my knee was the worst knee he's ever seen in his career. Well, you said Dr. Fowler? Dr. Kane. <laughs> no, that, that, that's why it was the way that it was, because he worked I didn't on me mean the to first get you time. Started. I know, I know. I didn't mean to get you started. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. But, but yeah, he said it was the worst knee he's ever seen, man. That thing, it looked, it looked horrible, man. But, again... So to go from all that I was dealing with six months ago to actually be running again and no sweater now, man, that is a blessing within this Yeah, yeah. Thank God for the small thing. No doubt. Well, Derek, yeah. uh, we, we appreciate you jumping on with us, man. It's always a lot of fun. If you would, man, tell us what's up next for you. From what I understand, you're going to be on Teague's Take uh, at the end of this month. So if you would, go ahead and pump that and tell fans how they can find you on social media. I'm going to finally get Langham face-to-face or – Podcast, you gotta let podcast. me know when this show airs. I got to, I got to be on. I gotta watch this. I'm talking about he get the MVP of the game. I didn't even. I thought I was the MVP <laughs> of the SEC championship game all these years. Now they said no. Langham got the. MVP. I was like, what? He made one play. He was getting beat like a boy. He was getting beat so bad that game. I, I was like, for real. So I was like, man, I know you mess up all game and make one play. And you the most valuable player. Yeah, but he he's a hell of a player. Me and me, we, we like to have fun. Uh we're definitely gonna have fun. We're gonna talk about the state of punishment for the athletes now. We're gonna talk, of course, about the ninety two season and things of that nature. It should be a good good little time. You know, when we get together, it's always gonna be a lot of laughing and, and it's gonna be a lot of lying because 
I don't know how to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget he got a Daniel Moore as well. Hey, listen, hey, listen. Langham would be a perfect politician. <laughs> when Agreed. His are, when his lips are moving, he lying. Hey, listen. When you when you on there with him, crack him about coaching high school basketball. Basketball. Yep. He can't play basketball. He, he was a high school basketball coach last year. <laughs> on coverage. Look, so he I'm had folks running his own coverage. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm on the phone with him. He's sitting in the bleachers. The custodian out there actually coaching the kids, and he's <laughs> yeah. talking on the phone. That sounds like Langham. All day. Like Lang- well, at least he volunteered his little time. You know, he got. You know that 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 means something. But the, uh, what was his record? That's what I want to know. Not good. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm say, man. I heard you. What's the What's the uh, most valuable coach uh, in college basketball? Is it the Naismith or well, who gets? What's That's the name? The most of valuable player. Oh, nice. So, I, I, I think is it the Wooden Award? John Wooden, Wooden, yeah, John Wooden, yeah. I said, I heard you ain't no John Wooden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell him Marvin told me that. <laughs> oh, you can tell him. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the phone with him. I hear the custodian out there coaching the kid. I'm like, aren't you supposed to be coaching, man? Oh, he got it. <laughs> he got it. He, as a matter of fact, he was on air with us while that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> he had, he, look, he had a little CB radio in his pocket. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, this, I, I didn't know Langham even knew anything about basketball. He doesn't. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that's, they, that's why the custodian was coaching him. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, you definitely want to tune in for that episode. It's going to be on uh, August 24th on Teague's Take. <laughs> that's a Tuesday, correct? Right? What's that? That's a Wednesday. That's Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Today's Tuesday, uh, yeah. Well, great, great show, fellas. Enjoyed it. Looking forward to the next one. Uh, audience members, we appreciate you. We appreciate the super chats and everybody being in our chat and supporting the show. Remember to hit like and subscribe and definitely go check out our YouTube channel as well. All right, guys. Until next week, roll tide. $25. Make you holler. That's 25 right. $25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, roll tide. <laughs> roll tide. <laughs> All right.